We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and as usual, uh, we're glad to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share with you this morning. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the second chapter of the book of, the book of Colossians. And this morning we're going to discuss some things and try to clarify some things because I feel like the Lord have laid it on our hearts to... Um, um, to expose some things and what's going on and many of you you may not be aware of this maybe you haven't run across this situation uh, but today we're gonna let you know about it and we're going to uh, comb through these things in the Word of God so that there will be no doubt in your mind what's taking place so uh, let's go hold your spot there in the book the second book of uh, the the second chapter of the book of Colossians let's go to the first chapter of the book of Galatians just real briefly the first chapter of the book of Galatians we want to say of course thank you all for joining us and um, those that are listening in live and those that are here sitting with us uh, we want to say thank you all and uh, I believe that this will be something that will help you to grow in the Lord Amen. So the first chapter of the book of Galatians, we're going to start reading it at verse 6. It says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So you have to understand this, that after you get saved, and I mean really saved, that there will come a time where the enemy will try to remove you, you see, from the grace of Christ and try to pull you into another gospel see that verse 7 says which is not another but there would be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ now what is the gospel of Christ the gospel of Christ is simply this salvation in Jesus Christ by grace are ye saved not by works but by grace now that's the salvation of Jesus Christ that's the pure pure word of God by grace through faith are you saved but according to what Paul tells us here in the book of Galatians that there will be some that come and trouble you you see that in other words get your mind boggled up about it so uh, let's go now to the fifth chapter Let's go, uh, well, actually, let's go read the second chapter of the book of Galatians. And what we want to, what we want to say here, of course, well, now we'll start off with, go ahead and tell you what has been going on in, uh, among the body of Christ, I should say. That after you get saved, some people, the Lord begin to reveal things to them, and then before you know it, they get heady and high-minded with those different revelations. And so then the enemy comes in there through pride, and gives them a little bit more and the whole time they thinking that is God just taking them from one point to the other to the other to the other but it's not the Lord and how do we know it's not God when it goes against God's word now there is a group of people among believers who call themselves Hebrews or black Israelites uh, they are most of the time they are uh, African American people who uh, feel like that they have gotten some kind of revelation that black people were the original Hebrews now let me make this clear God has never been concerned with skin tone or the tone of someone's skin you see that that ne that has never been a concern of his and regardless of what the skin tone of the Hebrew people were or is today that has nothing to do whatsoever with salvation and so let's say for instance you are one of those people let's say for instance that's true let's now, now I'm not saying it is but let's just say for instance that's true black people are the original Hebrews let's let's put a period on the end of that and say that's true let's just for just for you know us to learn something today what does you being a Hebrew have to do with you coming to the Lord what does you being a Hebrew have to do with you and your relationship with the Lord 
you being a, an original Hebrew does not excuse the fact that you still have to get saved. That you still have to have a relationship with God. It doesn't matter where you trace your genealogy, genealogy back to. In fact, Paul said not to get into the, to, to endless genealogies because they, they gender strife. So that, that first and foremost lets you know that you're outside of God's word. The fact that you're trying to trace your quote-unquote roots back to Abraham. You see, this same book that we're in now, the book of Galatians, it lets us know that I, Ishmael also was a biological son of Abraham, but he was not the seed of promise. He was not the child of promise. So what does that let us know? Faith is what makes you a child of Abraham. It doesn't matter. You can be a biological child and you could trace your roots all the way back to Abraham. But what does that have to do with your salvation? What you'll find when you get to the end of it is you'll run into a bunch of Pharisees in it, in this whole black Hebrew movement. Why? Because that was the problem that Jesus Christ had with the Pharisees when he walked his earth was they felt like because they were the children of Abraham, that gave them an advantage over people. And Paul wrote to us in the book of Romans, what advantage then does the Jew have over the Gentile? Really nothing except that the oracles of God was given to them first, which meant that they had to keep something that was never part of, of what the Gentiles had to keep. And it also meant they had to get over this hump of being so-called saved by works so that they could receive grace. The Gentiles never had to get over that hump because we never were under the law to begin with. And so what does the devil do? He introduces a new doctrine. And it's really, and you'll never find one of these so-called black Hebrew Israelites that isn't full of pride. Why? Because pride says, I have to do something to earn my salvation. Yeah, I receive it by grace, but we still supposed to keep the Torah. Now, the reason, part of the reason why we are addressing this right now is because I had a brother call me, a uh, 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 good brother from Georgia, the other day called me and uh, talked to me about it, that some Hebrew, some of these so-called Hebrew Israelites of the black persuasion called him, uh, was talking to him and telling him that he needed to keep the Torah, that he needed to keep the law of Moses. Why? Because what most of these people say is that Jesus said that not one jot or tittle of the law shall pass to all be fulfilled. Now, what they, what they really say is not one jot or tittle of the law will pass. And that's where they stop at. But Jesus said until all be fulfilled. And as I explained to him, if I told you, brother, that when my wife get home from work, I'm not going to the store until my wife get home from work, that means I'm still going to the store. But it won't happen until my wife get home from work. And what the Lord was saying in that instant of scripture is that the law will pass when or after all have been fulfilled. And what was he talking about? When he has fulfilled his purpose in this earth, which is why when he was on the cross, he said he uttered the words, it is finished. What was finished? Works. Righteousness by works was finished. You see that? So I'm going to tell you, I'm, and when we get done, you'll, you'll understand just how blind some people can be about this. But, you know, uh, so we have this whole group of people that's going around in the body of Christ trying to pull people back under the law and tell them that the law is still in effect for us today. So let's read the second chapter of the book of uh, Galatians and we're going to start at let's start at verse um, verse 11 it says but when Peter was come to Antioch I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed for before that certain came from James he did eat with the Gentiles but they were but when they were come he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision now, that was part of the law that Jewish people were not allowed to eat with Gentiles. All right, let's keep reading. 
and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with that dissimulation. In other words, hypocrisy. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, in other words, they called themselves trying to keep the law out of fear of what the higher up Jewish people would say. Let's look at what Peter's saying. I said to Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? In other words, if you really saved Peter and you know that you are from under the law, why are you trying to get the Gentiles to live like they're supposed to be under the law? And so my question to the so-called black Hebrew Israelites is this. If you're truly saved, then why are you going back under the law? Let's keep reading. Verse 15. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So if you're not justified by the law, then why are you trying to keep the law? You see, for here's the thing, for the black Hebrew Israelites to keep the law and try to justify themselves by the law, they have to ignore basically the New Testament. They have to ignore it. And they have to pick and choose. I'm going to tell you something. This word, the word of God, it, it jives together and it goes together from A to Z, from Genesis to Revelation. You have to, there's not one scripture that goes against another one in God's word. The Bible tells us that we are to rightly divide the word of truth. It tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I'm telling you, when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, the devil will exploit that and he'll have you doing all kind of things that are not godly. He will have you doing all kind of things that goes against God's word. You see that? And so that's not, of course, that's not God's will for our lives. Let's keep reading here. It says, but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. That means you can't live unto God if you're still trying to keep the law. The Torah, whatever you want to call it. God is not impressed with people keeping the law. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And it takes zero faith to keep the law. Zero. You see that? It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life for which I now live in the flesh, I live by what? The faith, not by works. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that's something that we have to realize. Now, if you have not been approached by these people, uh, just watch out. You know, the, the day will come, I'm sure, where these people will approach you. And now uh, what God is doing is he is equipping you to be able to withstand what they bring to the table. All right. Verse 21 says, For I, I do not... I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, if you could be saved and justified by something that was here before Christ got here, then what would be the purpose of what, what would be the purpose of Christ coming to begin with? Christ is is dead in vain. In other words, he he came in vain. He died in vain. If you could be righteous by the law, and that's something that the Lord want us to understand. You see that? That's something that the Lord want us to understand. Verse Chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. In other words, this is all I want y'all to tell me. Receive ye the Holy Spirit, the Spirit by the works of the law, or by 
the hearing of faith. In other words, when that Holy Spirit came to live inside of you, was it because you were keeping the law or was it because you believed the gospel? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you not made perfect by the flesh? In other words, if it was the spirit of God <clears throat> that led you to Jesus Christ to believe in him and the finished work of the cross, then are you now made perfect by keeping the law? Why would you go back under something that couldn't make you perfect to begin with? You see that? Verse 4, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? You see that? Of course, by the hearing of faith. You see that? And so it's important that we understand what the Lord is bringing out to us today. You see, it, it's very important that we understand that, that we don't get caught up in this, what the Hebrews, the so-called black Hebrew Israelites are, are going, are, are doing, you know, and trying to do, trying to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ and trying to overthrow the faith of people. That is not God's will, that your faith be overthrown by what somebody, somebody else's conviction, which is not a conviction of the Holy Spirit, is really the Antichrist spirit that's working among these people my question is this <clears throat> to those people and this is one of the things that I, I brought out to the brother I said brother if, if you go back under the law of course the Bible says and we'll cover this another time uh, in, in, in another part of this lesson the word of God says that if you're under the law then you are debtor to do the whole law that means that you have to keep the whole Torah the whole law of Moses so my question is this for you black Hebrew Israelites that are walking in pride and think that you're justified by the law. Where is your altar and where are your oxen and your sheep and your goats and your turtle doves and all of those animals that you had to sacrifice? See, you can't pick and choose what part of the law you want to keep if you plan on keeping the law. You, you have to accept it all. You can't just pick and choose. Well, you know, the Bible says we're supposed to keep the Sabbath, so I'm going to keep the Sabbath. You see that? No, you can't pick and choose that. And, of course, the black Hebrew Israelites, they refuse to have church service on Sundays because they feel like you're worshiping another God if you worship on Sundays. But listen, the, the bottom line is this. You're supposed to worship God every day. It's not a, all days belong to the Lord. You see that? And so, but the black Hebrew Israelites, they say, well, we're supposed to worship on Saturday. Well, you know what? We're supposed to worship every day. God is not a respecter of holy days and, and, and uh, or things like that. We keep it all. You see that? We worship him in every single day. Not just coming to a sanctuary, but in our everyday lifestyle. So my question is this. Where is your altar? And every time you sin, are you offering the proper sacrifice? You can't trust in the Lord as your final sacrifice. For your sin, but yet and still want to keep the Sabbath, the, the seven day Sabbath. See, you have to do it all. So if Christ has become of none effect to you, he, he, you can't keep part of it and then expect him to keep the rest of it for you. You have to either give it all to him or take it all upon yourself. You don't get to pick and choose. And, and there were so many stipulations in the law. Another question is this. When, you know, for the men who call themselves the black Hebrew Israelites, according to the word of God in the Torah, you see, when your your wife was on her cycle, you couldn't sleep in the same bed with her. So are you sleeping in the same bed with her? And, and when she when she when her menstruation have stopped flowing, are you offering the sacrifice that you're supposed to offer for her to be cleaned? See, there's a lot that goes on with that. You see, there's a lot that goes on with that. And not only do you, do you offer sacrifices, you have to do it in a certain place. So, you see, you don't get to pick and choose what you want to keep. You have to keep all of it. And, of course, the answer to those questions are, no, I'm not keeping that, which means that you're not keeping the law to begin with. You just need to come from under it. The law was our schoolmaster. And we'll go over that in another, in another time. But the law was our schoolmaster that led us to grace. In other words, schoolmaster is like a babysitter. It's like somebody that's watching over a child. That was for the, the children element of God, the childlike element of God. But when you are born by the Spirit of God, you're no longer under the law. You're not under the law. You're under grace. And grace and law cannot dwell in the same place. 
Amen. My prayer is that something have been said that have helped you all. Uh, now we want to go ahead and take uh, any questions or comments. So if you're on the phone and you have a question or comment, uh, you can press 1 and uh, we'll take your question or comment. And uh, one of the things we want to make sure that people know without a shadow of a doubt is, is that we are no longer under the law. Uh, that that you, God does not intend for you to be entangled in that yoke of bondage. That salvation is by grace through faith alone. You see that it is not of works. You see that. And God wants you to understand that if you don't understand anything else. And when we get done combing these scriptures back and forth there's there's not a rock the so-called black hebrew israelites are going to be able to hide under uh, you know and my prayers is that some of them will hear this and they themselves will be delivered from that bondage that the enemy is trying to bring them back under amen we want to say thank you all for joining us today of course we pray that something was said that have been a blessing to you and we pray that you will continue to listen into this broadcast have a blessed day